Hey guys, it's Veron from Seek of the Stars and welcome back to my channel. So today we're doing another watercolor piece. It's one of those smaller pieces but it's still my normal watercolor type of thing. But today we're doing one of the stuff that I wanted to do for the confined series I guess. It's not like a super established series but it's a concept that I wanted to try where I draw something in a confined circle or a, like it's a confined a certain shape, a certain object. And I don't use the entire paper or, or canvas to show the piece. So the last time I did this, I did like an elf in a forest. I'll just insert a photo here. Um, but now I wanted to do like a window. It ended up also being a circular type of thing. But for some reason, I really wanted this like circular window that was somewhat inspired, somewhat loosely based off old historical Asian windows where it's circular, has a wooden frame, has like wooden bars and stuff like that and yeah so I decided to roll with that and make the entire piece somewhat Asian vibe feeling themish so we have a very loosely inspired kimono type of thing uh, even the headdress on the character is somewhat more Asian leaning in terms of the theme and the vibe of it I did do use a little bit of fashion preferences so it's very fantasy based so it's not meant to be accurate or anything like that. And yeah, that's how I ended up with this piece. So I do skip the line art phase quite a bit, mainly because um, I'm using such a thin pen that on top of lead it's not really visible. So it really isn't nice to watch and it's just extra time that's kind of useless. So we'll just have this little insert here where I draw the window because it's the most visible. And yeah, actually we'll mention that I also go in again with the point with the point one or the or a thicker pen to create some more depth and you know line variation in the line art. So the watercolors that we're using today is actually almost all of my watercolors. So I'm primarily using the Florida Hagan Saitambe watercolors. I'm also gonna be use using over there on the left is the Knochula Koi watercolor palette for extra colors and I also will use the Pima Confections complexion set just for like two two or three colors I think. But I decided to use the today because I don't really use it that much. I'm really um, used to the the Sakura Kois and the Pima Confections. Um, I, I also started with tube paint so I'm more leaning towards that. So the Sakura the Tahis were a bit of a different species of watercolor to me mainly because of how how it works like if, if you have a kuratahi you would know the difference of it versus like say your sakudas or your um, primas and your pangs it's quite different actually it's kind of near pang but anyway it's still pretty different it's not as solid um it's quite sticky actually when you dip your let's say finger or your brush in it it's actually really really vibrant which is great and the way that it lays down and mixes on paper is still come somewhat different from your uh, your normal watercolors or your western I guess you hear people call it like western and eastern or I don't really know if there's such a thing but it's it, if they know more than I do hey. <laughs> um so I'll just call it that I guess so the thing with the kuratak is that as I mentioned, it is really sticky and it acts a little bit like tube paints, especially when your tube paints aren't completely dry yet. But the way it mixes or the way it lays down on paper is actually also different because with my tube paints and with the sakuras, I don't. It doesn't lift, or yeah, it doesn't lift as much with water. With the kuratakis, they actually lift quite a bit. So, in terms of. Um, wet on wet. It is great because it does blend so beautifully together. But if you want like a hard line or hard layer, I would suggest that you would let it dry completely first before you go in. Because it will blend. And it, to some people that's awesome and I do like it. I feel like I just wasn't prepared for it because I wasn't intending that kind of effect. So I got a little bit surprised. But I did learn that you have to let it dry first and it I did get the same effect that I wanted as in normal watercolor, so that's fine. But yeah, 
I just don't use it that much, mainly because I guess the colors. Because like the colors are very they're beautiful, they're interesting, but there are some colors that I really like. Like I really like blue or really yellowish leaning blue and I'm pretty sure I could mix that. But I have this good colors in hand, so might as well use them, right? They mm, but they they had a problem with mixing with Western. They didn't have too much of a problem mixing with the with the Western water colors. I just think that they separated a little bit when you mix them on the palette. But once you mix them and put them down on the paper while they're together, they actually don't do anything weird, so that's pretty cool. And they don't have any problem layering over other kinds of watercolor. It's just when you mix it on a plastic pad, that's when you see them sort of separating a little bit. And you see like little granules of the pigment, but you can just easily remix, remix that as you use it. So I feel like I could have done a lot better in terms of the color scheme. So what happened was I thought of the piece in parts. So I thought of the window and maybe possibly what the wall would look like. I thought that I want that I wanted to have a tree in there. And then I knew that there would be a character, but I didn't really think of what she would be wearing or what what colors it would be wearing. I first assumed that I'd be doing a very bright like you know, like it's the inside of a house, so there'd be like a bright light or yellowish looking tinted light or and maybe the character wearing something like a peach, but I ended up really liking this magenta color. But I didn't realize that when I put them together, they kind of blend in together. So what I'm doing now is that I'm adding some blue to create a bit more of a violet tone, just to create some distinction between the window and the girl. And I even thought that, hey, I want the girl to have brown here because I tend to use blonde and black a lot or some other weird color, but I don't really use brown. So, I wanted to use brown, but then I realized that the wood is brown, so... Uh, <laughs> suggestion, pro tip, try to think of the entire piece before you actually start drawing it, because with me, you get issues like this, where the color scheme in your head and parts look great, but when you put them together in paper, it's not so great. I did have fun though, I really do like these watercolors, I just feel like... I need to learn how to mix them a bit more or how to play with the colors that's given to me a bit more. They're really, really good. I just really like the vibrant, playful colors of the Sakura colors. What I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm attempting to darken the wood just to create a bit more contrast and just so that it doesn't completely blend in with the clothes. And that's one of the things you can do to keep on trying to repair your color scheme, I guess. Um, it doesn't always 100% break, you, you could end up with a mess. And I was just lucky this time that um, it worked pretty well. ended up doing like a really dark bluish background, mainly because I did already put blue on the dress. And I feel like using like a bright light type of background would make it blend too much, especially since I so much yellow and red already. So creating a bit of contrast with the blue, maybe like with a dark sky-ish type of interior, creates a bit more balance in it. <laughs>
this is where I make a bit of a pretty big mistake. So I wanted to have a tree right? And I don't think I did the tree justice. Because <laughs> I, I had a really good image of it and I feel like I just needed to use like a different brown maybe? Like something that's more closer to the frame of the wood. Um, I tried to do that by adding blue. It became a little a bit of a mess. I took a break in between this, you just don't see it on camera. Uh, I took a break, let it dry. Um, I tried to make the tree a bit more defined. You know, it's a happy... <laughs> I don't say happy. It's a little bit of an accident, but the best you can do is just suck it up and try to make it prettier. Try to fix your mistake. And that's what I'm doing right now. Now, I did contemplate maybe um, just scrapping the piece and then doing it completely over. But by the time I thought that I already had the tree in and it was already fully colored and I didn't want to do that. So maybe a year from now I'd return to it and try to do it again. Maybe with a bit more solid color scheme in my head. I actually do like the composition somewhat. I'll just maybe tweak it just a little bit more. But other than that, I actually kind of do like it. I just made some decisions that were not the best. And, well, that's art and that's life, so meh. <laughs> On to the next piece, I guess. So either way, we're kind of coming to a close on the video. I hope you enjoyed this. I didn't talk too much since it's a typical watercolor video. I just really enjoy my watercolors. Um, if you relate to my struggles in this video, feel free to comment down below. Mm, yeah, I hope you still enjoyed. If you did, consider liking or subscribe liking to this bleh. Wow. Consider liking this video or subscribing to my channel if you want to see more of it. Um Oh, I just wanna slide this in real quick. The opaque the, the white on the cut of that is is so nice. It's so opaque, it's so you know, it's so solid and like sure I had to layer it up on the trees, but it's such good paint for highlights and I haven't really encountered a watercolor white that could do that. So I was very impressed. Okay, anyway. <laughs> I got distracted, oh no. I lost my outro. Oh well. Yeah. Um I hope you enjoyed. Follow me on Facebook, Instagram, or DeviantArt if you wanna see more. And I'll see you around.